So this section is going to go over hits. And hits are a specific definition of how to attack a hard move. And by hard move, I mean instead of doing a soft chest lift, you would do hard, which would be a lock. And there's a number of different ways you can approach this. Doing a lock, boom, boom. Doing a pop, which is like a bounce, and then doing a hit. Hits are taken from break dance, pop lock. Um, I've spent a lot of time watching YouTube, so uh, that's where most of my education has come from. And my personal definition, and what makes the most sense to me, is this idea of you attack the move and then there's an instantaneous recoil. So that's what creates the stylization of the hit. That's what is different. Uh, instead of locking a move, sharp, 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 which is its own look, it would be hit, move, hit, move, hit, move, hit, move. So there's an instantaneous motion that happens. This is what creates the stylization. So to break it down for you, um, we are together going to put our hands out. And you're going to think about everywhere from the wrist all the way up to the shoulder, trying not to get the back muscles involved because that creates a very tense look in the back and the face uh, because the muscles travel all the way up to your neck. And you're gonna tighten the muscles very, 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 very um, tight and you're gonna release them very quickly. So it's a very quick reaction, tighten, release. It's very important not to get this into the hands because you don't want to flex the fingers. It's not, that's not the specific style, does not involve flexing the hands. It's just the wrist all the way up to the shoulder. So when I say this, let's do it slowly. Tighten and release. Two more times. Tighten and release. Again, keeping the fingers and the hands relaxed, the neck and the shoulders. And again, tightening and releasing the muscles, keeping the hands relaxed and not uh, tensing the fingers up at all. So again, we go tighten and release. So now we're gonna take the space out from the tighten and the release and we're gonna make it one move. So there will be a tighten release. It'll be very quick and one. So it becomes one count. It is not two, it's not one, two, it's one. So you'll think of the reaction that release as the one, so you're kind of hitting it slightly before the count. So if we count five, six, seven, eight, one, you'll notice that I'm tightening just a millisecond before the one so that that hit or that tighten and that pull away is what happens on the one. So let's do that a couple times. The hands out, six, seven, eight, and one. Again, and one. Again, and one. Again, and one. Okay, so the next step is the recoil. Tight release, we're now going to refer to as a hit. The next step being the recoil or the pull away. So when you touch something that's very hot, like a stove, you're going to instantly pull away. It's almost an uncontrollable knee-jerk reaction, like when the doctor hits you with that thing in your knee, pops your leg up. That's the same sensation, only this pull away. And that is going to be referred to as the recoil from this moment on. So we're going to hit, and then you're going to pull back, almost as though that tightening and releasing sensation creates this very quick recoil, like a snake that's hit and is pulling away. So let's do that. We're gonna add it together. Six, seven, eight, hit, recoil. And a very, very, very important thing here is that you take the space out from the hit and the recoil. So it's not hit recoil, which is not going to make the move look the way you want it to, it's hit recoil. It's an instantaneous motion, but very controlled and very slow. So let's do that again, doing the hit and the recoil. Five, six, seven, and hit recoil. And it's very subtle. So it's not boom and pull back, there's no jerking, you don't want your whole body to react to it. It's very controlled and deliberate. Again, six, seven, and hit recoil. And one more time, five, six, seven, and hit recoil. Okay, so now we're gonna apply this to another part of the body. Um, when I've seen break dancers and pop lockers do this, they do a lot of it in their arms, a lot of it in their shoulders, a lot of it in their whole body, and they're doing this like tight and release with the whole, with the entire body. And what I've done, and I know other dancers has done, have done this as well, is applied it to the belly dance, um, the belly dance moves that we're all familiar with. So we'll start with chest lifts. So lifting up and down 
and up and down, up and down. So a chest lift and a chest drop. Now we're going to make it a lock. So we're going to go lock, down, lock, down, and lock, and down. I learned something very important from uh, Frederic, and that is that the muscle, uh, the diaphragm right before below your chest is a huge part of understanding how to make a good sharp lock or a hit with the chest and not involve the shoulders. The difference is using the upper back a lot and the shoulders, you're gonna get this push back of the shoulders, which makes it hard to do chest lifts very quickly because you're, you're getting a lot of your shoulders, your upper back involved. So even though you are going to be using the middle of your back, we, uh, we want the move to also come from here. So just take a moment, push out your diaphragm. So it's going to look very strange. So it's right here, right below the chest. And release, and push it out, and release. It's a strange muscle to find, but you'll know when you find it because you'll have this kind of strange, rounded thing popping out from right below your chest. So this is where we want that punchy hit to initiate from. So let's all try to lift the chest from here. Boom, and down. So pushing from here. So again, the difference is this and this. Quite a difference, and it makes a huge difference, and when you're doing hits with your chest, it's very important to understand the diaphragm and its role in this. So let's do chest locks, working with the diaphragm, thinking of it being the diaphragm that is helping push that chest up and taking it out of the upper back. Here we go, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And up, down, up, down, four, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so now we're gonna make it into a hit. So we're gonna go up, down, we're gonna take the space out from between and we're gonna consider it one move. So you're gonna go up, down. And again, trying not to get the shoulders involved. Here we go, and up, down. Remember when we talked before about the hands um, kind of hitting the stove and pulling back in a recoil, pulling back from something that's hot? It's the same sensation with the chest. It's that same pull back. So even though you're going up, down, the emphasis is on the down. So we're gonna count it and we're gonna do it together thinking of it as, it as a hit. So it's gonna be one count. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Again, and one. Again, and one and hit, and hit, and hit, one more, and hit. So from here, we're gonna add the recoil. Before the recoil was the hit, pull back with the hands, this time the recoil will be rolling down the stomach, or a belly roll from up to down. Let's do two of those just to get comfortable with it. This is muscular, you're using your upper abs and your lower abs. So we're gonna go upper abs, roll through, lower abs. Upper abs, roll through, lower abs. If I did this profile, my spine would actually be moving very little. So this is not a belly roll using the spine so much as it is a muscular roll. This is very important because the, the, the ability to do this very quickly is affected by how much you're using the muscles as opposed to being, making it more of a skeletal move. So adding it together, hit, recoil, belly roll down. Five, six, seven, eight, and hit, roll down. Again, on five, six, seven, eight, hit, roll down. One more time, five, six, seven, and hit, roll down. From here, we're gonna go from down to up, pelvic drop and tuck. And what's gonna happen is, is when you come up, that is what's going to create the recoil. So as opposed to going up, down, you're gonna go down, up, and that's what's gonna pull it up. So let's just do a pelvic drop and tuck using the lower back muscles, and that's what's gonna really power this one. So we're gonna go down and up. Down, up, down, up. Really making sure that you're rocking as opposed to just dropping the belly. You're really rocking the pelvis front to back. And down, up, down, up. And now we're gonna lock it, six, seven, and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 
up. Double time, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. So let's make that into a hit. One count, down up. Five, six, just that, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and hit, two, three, four, and hit, two, three, last one, and hit. So the recoil this time, you guessed it, is gonna be down to up. So let's do that a couple times. Again, practicing keeping the spine still and making this muscular, not a skeletal move. So let's do that. Lower abs through upper abs and down, up, down, up. If I turn sideways, again, there's some movement in the spine, but not a whole lot. And down to up, down to up, five, four, three, two, and one. Make sure you're not hunching over to access the muscles. Make sure you're practicing good postures. You do this. So let's add it together. Pelvic drop tuck, which will be a hit, into a recoil up. Six, seven, and hit, roll up. Again, one roll up. Again, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So now we're gonna put it together, essentially playing a game of Pong between our chest and our hips. You're gonna go one and up and down and up. We'll start slow. We'll do four slow, four medium, and four fast. Starting with the chest. Five, six, seven, and hit. Roll down and drop. Roll up and hit. Roll down, drop. Roll up, hit. Roll down, drop. Roll up, hit. Roll down and drop. Roll up. And now we can do a little faster. So we'll do it approximately twice as fast. Five, six, seven, and hit. Roll down. Down, roll up, and chest, and pelvis. And up, and down, and up. For five, four, three, two, and one. And one more time, nice and fast. As we do this faster, for those of you who are still working half speed, go half speed while we do it faster. Um, it's very important to make this muscular because if you're using your spine, you're not gonna be able to speed this one up. So while we're doing this, focus on keeping it controlled, keeping it in the muscle. Here we go. Five, six, seven, and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, four, five, four, three, two, one. All right. You can apply this to any other part of the body. This is a concept. This is not a move, this is a concept. So as well as you could take a lock or a pop and apply it to any part of your body, it's the same thing with a hit. So we're gonna do a little sequence and we're gonna use the head and the arms and um, different body postures just to show you how you can mess with this one a little bit. We're gonna start with the head. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna swing the head over to the side. So to get an idea of this um, slide, it's kind of an angle and then boom, your head goes completely straight up and down from the floor, is you're gonna draw a figure eight out in front of you. And you're gonna do that with your head. It's almost like you're doing a sidewinder with your head for those, or a figure eight up to down with your head, but we're not gonna do the full thing. You're gonna cut it into four quadrants and we're gonna do the bottom four. You're gonna go down, over, and we're gonna think of this as kind of a slingshot or a prep for the hit. So instead of doing a hit with the head where you're here and you go boom, we're gonna start by pulling it over and snapping the head the opposite direction from the slingshot. So let's do that. Head goes over and stop at that bottom quarter quadrant. Hold it here for a second. Now you're gonna slide the head over there. Let's just do the move without the concept. And over. Let's do the other side. Head slides and pulls over that bottom figure eight and then it stops and slide it over. Just the move, not the concept. Again, both sides through the bottom quarter figure eight and slide. Other side, through the bottom quarter eight and slide. One more time, through the quarter of the figure eight, slide, and through the quarter of the figure eight and slide. So let's add that little hit. But before we do, there's something that we're gonna talk about, which is creating 
uh, chest slide opposite to the head. This also helps create the sensation your head is moving more than it is because our heads are very delicate things, our necks very sensitive, and it's very important to understand that whenever we're talking about head locks or anything, and I have been guilty of this too, is not to make them too big because A, you will scare the audience um, and you could hurt yourself and set yourself up for injury further down the road. So really think about um, small and compact and powerful, not big. Never think huge size in terms of the head. We have to protect our necks. And uh, it's very good to know that you can use the chest to create more of an illusion, but make sure when doing this next exercise that's gonna help us with this combination that don't fool yourself into thinking that you're moving your chest when in, I'm sorry, that you're moving your head when in fact you're just moving your chest. Make sure you're looking in the mirror when you do this one on your own and not just watching the video. Make sure you're doing it right. It's very important that you don't fool yourself into thinking your chest is going with your head, but it's just in fact your chest. So we're gonna take the head and we're gonna slide it this way. And we're gonna take the chest and we're gonna slide it opposite. So let's try that. Sometimes touching the set part of your body you want to move will help. So. Here we go, and over. Back to center, other side, over. Back to center, other side, over. Back to center, other side. One more time, and slide. Hands on the hips, and we're gonna do it side to side. Six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Try it faster and side. Side, 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 side. Check it out. So, this is harder for some people than doing head even with the chest. And it's actually harder for me to do the head with the chest than it is to do this. You'll see in a second why this is important to be able to separate the two and have them go opposite directions. Head goes down and over, just like we did before, head slides. Now what's gonna happen to create the sensation of the head go ev going even further? Your chest is gonna pop the other direction. So head over, get ready for it, and boom. See what I'm saying? Chest goes opposite. Let's do it one more time, other side. And head goes over, and boom. One more time each side, head over, and hit. Other side, over, and hit. Okay, let's put it all together with the arms. Arms are gonna float on the side. Remember, it's a tightening and the releasing, that's the hit. So as the head and the chest goes over, you're tightening and releasing these muscles in the back. Don't use these. Don't do this. It's not pretty at all. So let's just try adding a pop and then putting it together. Head slide, chest, and pop. Six, seven, and tighten release. Now the difference here, which you probably noticed, is when we did the chest pop rolling down, the recoil went the opposite direction of the hit. In this case, when you do the hit, the body moves the same direction as the hit. So let's do that. Just the slide with the chest going the opposite direction with the hits. Six, seven, eight, one, two, back to center, other side. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, good. And we're gonna obviously follow this through with another movement to kind of milk that recoil. But let's go back to the beginning with the hands and throw it all together where it's at with the bottom figure eight. Here we go, five, six, seven, and a one, two, three, four. You're gonna hold that and you're gonna snap it on five. Five, six, seven, eight. So what's happened here is you're flowing through with what I've heard people call kind of a version of a sidewinder. Essentially, hands on the hips, we're gonna do this really quickly. It's a figure eight of the chest. So before we were talking about the head, the figure eight is drawing a, che is drawing a, chest, or a chest figure eight from up to down, down, up and down. So you're essentially just following through with a bit of a sidewinder, as it's been called. So let's do that again on the other side. Head goes over, two, 
three, four, and five. Six, seven, eight. Other side, and one, two, three, four, snap it, five, six, seven, other side, one, two, three, four, snap it, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so let's go, let's move on. So now that I've shown you that, we're gonna take what we did earlier, and that's a pelvic drop to tuck, and that's gonna be our first hit in this sequence. And it is going to be counted as five, six, seven, and hit, two, three, four, roll up, five, six, seven, eight, and that re recoil becomes faster now. So instead of counting a whole four counts, it's half a count. Cause again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and. So it's on the and, right after the eight. Eight and. Next one is the one, which is what we just did with the hit and the chest. So let's do that. And one, two, three, four, and instead of keeping going with that up to down figure eight, you're gonna bring it into the hips. Five, six, seven, eight. And you're really, 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 really pulling that oblique in. That's how you're creating the lift. Your foot's up on the toe. So let's move on. The next thing we're gonna do is instead of, as we did here, which was a little bit of a prep, on the and, we're gonna drop the hip in a lock. And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna squeeze our glute on the side, the leg that is standing, boom. And you're gonna make it nice and sharp, boom. Nice and sharp. And that's on the and. So you've just gone five, six, seven, eight, and. So the next thing is another way to apply a hit to a movement. And what this is going to be is a hip drop on obviously this side and a sink. And how you do this is you're gonna use the muscles in your belly, tighten, release. So let's just do that a little bit, it's kind of strange. Put your hands on your abs and tighten, release. Tighten, release. Tighten, release. Tighten, release. Feel it in your chest a little bit. It's, it's almost more like a full body hit. So again, going from the eight and, five, six, seven, eight, and, again, it's that lock, squeezing the glute of the flat foot, and then sinking down, and that's the hit. So as you sink down, as you drop that hip, you tighten the abs, you tighten the arms a little bit, and it's gonna create that sensation of popping through the whole body. So let's do that from the five, six, seven, eight before. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, and you'll sink. The arms are gonna do, one hand is going to swing up by the face. The other arm is gonna swing up behind you, and the wrist is going to float back. And you're gonna face your palm to the back wall. So let's just do the arms. Five, six, seven, eight. Only it will be longer. You're gonna count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's do that with the movement, going into that sink, starting from the one before it. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you wanna end there on eight. Do that again. Again, really remember that and popping it, using the abs, tighten release, and sink. Avoid the neck, everything but the neck. Let's actually go from the beginning, from the pelvis, on five, six, seven, and drop tuck. Two, three, four, and boom. Two, three, and hit sink. Two, three, four. We did a little faster that time, but it merely speeded it up from eight counts to four. So the next thing we're gonna do is the same head movement. Head goes down into a straight up and down with the floor and then boom, you're gonna hit it again. And now this time, you don't, you're covering your chest and you can't really do this, so the recoil is going to be you pulling up. So the head hits and then you're gonna pull up and obviously you're pulling the hands down towards you. Let's do that. 
So you've just finished the last move. Five, six, seven, eight, and same count. One, pulling it up, two, three, four, facing center, five, six, from the beginning. It's pelvic tuck, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one more time, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hit sink, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, head hit pull in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's do the other side. You're gonna have the head go the other way. Everything else is just done the opposite side. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and hit. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and hit, sink. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and hit. Two, three, four, five, six, one more time. One, two, three, lifting through, all the way through the head, and hit. Two, three, four, five, pulling the hip up, and hit, sink. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and hit. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 